The extreme value theorem is a theorem that will be helpful in a lot of different applications down the road. Even when we're looking at numerical integration and we're trying to find out the number of subintervals we need in order to meet an approximation guideline, the extreme value theorem is embedded within that. Now the extreme value theorem I've presented in an earlier video and linked it in the description of this one. In fact, you could click right here in order to see the video on the extreme value theorem itself. But basically it says that if you have a continuous function over a closed interval, you're guaranteed that for some value in that closed interval, counting possibly at the endpoints, to have a place where that x input would give you out a maximum, an absolute maximum function value output, as well as an input that would give you an absolute minimum function value output. Now, that video just gave the specifics about the extreme value theorem. In this video, we're going to specifically look at an example. So here, I want to find the absolute max and min of my function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 4 on this closed interval from negative 4 to 2. Now, this is a polynomial function, and polynomial functions are continuous throughout the entire domain of negative infinity to infinity. So I do have a continuous function, and with the brackets, it's designating that I'm using the endpoints. So I have a continuous function on a closed interval, so I'm guaranteed an absolute max and absolute min. There are four different steps that you follow in order to find the extreme values of a continuous function on a closed interval. The very first thing you want to do is find the critical values of f of x in that closed interval. So remember, critical values of a function are values in the domain of the original function for which the first derivative is zero or undefined. So we'll come back and do that in a minute. Next up, we're going to evaluate our function at the critical values we found in step one. Then in step three, we're going to evaluate our function at the endpoints of our interval. And then in the fourth step, we compare the outputs we got from step two and step three. The biggest output wins for the absolute max and the smallest output wins for the absolute min. So let's look at what we have here. So to find the critical values of the function, we need to take the derivative. So our derivative f prime of x, well, we're going to do term by term derivatives. So this will be 6x squared plus 6x, and then minus 12, and then plus 0. So here's our derivative. So values in the domain of the original function for which this derivative is 0 or undefined. Well, this derivative is not undefined for any values of x, but it's 0 when 6x squared plus 6x minus 12 is 0. Um, there's a common factor of 6 that I can factor out of this. So 6 times x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Factoring x squared plus x minus 2, well that's 6 times x plus 2, x minus 1. And then setting each factor that has a variable in it equal to 0, well 6 doesn't have a variable in it, so I'm not going to set that equal to 0. x plus 2 equal to 0, subtract the 2 over, I get x equal negative 2. And then add the 1 to both sides, I get x equal 1. Now I compare these and make sure they're in my interval, all right? So negative 2 is in the span of numbers from negative 4 to 2. 1 is also in the span of numbers from negative 4 to 2. So I'll be able to use both of those critical values because they are in the interval that we're interested in. Okay, so that was step 1. Step 2 now, we want to evaluate the function at the critical values from step 1. So I'm going to find f of negative 2 
So that's 2 times negative 2 cubed plus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 plus 4. And when you go through and you calculate that out, f of negative 2 is 24. Now do f of 1. Well, f of 1 is 2 times 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1 plus 4 and f of 1 is negative 3. Now I also want to evaluate my function at the endpoints of the interval. So f of negative 4 we would do the same thing, we would plug it through the function, but you'll find that f of negative 4 is negative 28. And then f of 2, when you put 2 in for all of the x's in the function, you get f of 2 is 8. Okay, now step 4, the largest output. So I look at all these outputs. I have an output of 24, an output of negative 3, an output of negative 28, and an output of 8. Of all of those, the biggest output is 24. So my absolute max is 24. So your output is your absolute maximum value. It happens at the x value of negative 2. And then my absolute min is the smallest output. So looking at all of those numbers, the smallest output is negative 28. And it happens at an x value of negative 4. So hopefully um, this has helped you in how to actually apply the extreme value theorem. And thank you for watching my videos. I'll post more as the time goes on, so keep checking back.